Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to this short video looking at the difference between internal and external economies of scale. And it's an important distinction to make when analysing firms and industries and the impact of their production decisions on consumers and other stakeholders. So what are internal economies of scale? Well, internal economies of scale are defined as the unit cost advantages, the fall in average cost per unit that comes from a business expanding the scale of their production in the long run. And this represents an improvement in their productive efficiency and can often give a, a business a sizable cost and competitive advantage against rival firms. Uh, you can draw an analysis diagram, for example, to show how economies of scale can lead to a fall in prices for consumers and also an increase in profits. As long as the average cost of production is falling in the long run, then internal economies of scale are being achieved. Now, a key example point is that economies of scale apply to a single firm as it grows. We're focusing on a particular business as they feel like they ramp up the scale of production. For the exam, you'll need to have good examples of possible internal economies of scale. Some of them relate to production. For example, containerization is a great example. Uh, the idea that you can fill a ubiquitous container, which has a standard width and height and length. If you can fill it, you can bring down, reduce the unit cost of transportation. Businesses might grow and deploy specialist managers or be able to buy uh, their raw materials, for example, in bulk. Larger businesses may be able to borrow money at cheaper rates of interest. That's a financial economy of scale. And also benefit from diversification, both of product and market, to cut the risk of supply. There's also something called the network economy of scale, which is where once you've built a network as a kind of platform, the marginal cost of adding an extra user is really low and it brings down the fixed cost per user on the network. So the key, key revision point for an internal economy of scale is that the shape of the average cost curve in the long run depends on both the returns to scale of production. So for example, Q1 to Q2, we're seeing increasing returns to scale. And again, from Q2 to Q3, the average cost is falling. The returns to scale in terms of lower costs are increasing. But also the effect of scale on the, the prices that the firm pays for its key inputs. So for example, as you move from Q1 to Q2 to Q3, it may well be the case that a firm can use its monopsony power to bring down the unit cost of the, of the raw materials or the component parts that it buys. Q3 will be something close to the minimum efficient scale. Of course, there's always the potential if the firm goes beyond its optimum size for diseconomies of scale to kick in. But that's the subject of another video. Another key example point. The extent of internal scale economies will vary from industry to industry. Here's a good example of a business that is, of course, now on an enormous, a giant scale. For some people, Amazon is too big and the issues in competition policy about whether these big businesses should be broken up. But have a look on the left hand side, the number of people employed by Amazon from 17,000 in 2007 to over 600,000 in 2018. This is global employment in Amazon. And look, for example, at their huge uh, scale in terms of the Amazon web service providers. This is a, a cloud platform service. Lots of businesses, for example, including tutor to you run their, their websites on Amazon web service. And they've now got something like well, a huge market share compared, for example, to Microsoft Azure and the Google Cloud. So Amazon is clearly a business on an enormous scale. Another key example point. In an industry where the minimum efficient scale, in other words, the lowest point on the average cost curve, where that is high relative to market demand, then an industry will tend to be highly concentrated. So if there are big, significant, enormous economies of scale internally, typically, the industry tends to morph towards being highly concentrated. 
Let's go back to our example of Amazon. Here's, here's some data showing the smart speaker market share in the UK in 2018. Google, of course, making a big play for the smart speaker market share. But of course, Amazon currently has a big, a big advantage. Alexa, tell me the, the size of Amazon's market share. 75% market share in the first quarter of 2018. So that's internal economies of scale. Let's move on to external economies of scale. Well, what are they? Well, these are the reductions in average costs for businesses who benefit from an expansion of the industry of which they are a member. Key point here is that external economies of scale occur outside of a firm, but within an industry, within a sector. Classic example. Uh, an industry, all the firms in the industry might benefit from improvements in transportation networks, investments in new road and light rail, for example. Another good example could be that uh, within a, a town or a city, a local university increases their investment in research and development facilities, and those are made available in partnership with local businesses. And a very good example of external economies of scale are so-called agglomeration economies, that come from the clustering of similar businesses in a, in a tight geographical location. Software businesses in Silicon Valley is a common example. An exam point for you. All firms potentially can benefit from external commas of scale, pretty much independent of their size. And uh, let's just focus for a little bit on agglomeration economies, the cost savings, the higher efficiency productivity, that can flow from the clustering of factor inputs. So for example, software engineers in a particular area sharing information, sharing information, innovating. So the Mercedes F1 a factory in Brackley is a really good example. There's a cluster of Formula One teams in and around Northamptonshire. Most of the F1 teams actually, I think, are based in the UK along with their research and development operations. And there's a whole network of industries, component suppliers, engineering design firms, etc., that have relocated to serve the Formula One teams um, in the UK. So F1, great example of externally commas of scale. Silicon Valley, two lovely pictures here. There's a Cupertino in California, United States, and that's the new Apple head office, or is it the new tutor to you research, research and development building? I'll find out later. And the lovely view of Silicon Valley from Mission Hill. The clustering of highly talented people and businesses uh, creates an agglomeration economy. Now, what about a diagram? Well, with an external economy of scale, that has the potential to bring down the unit cost for all firms, independent of output. So one way you would show external economies of scale is by a downward shift in the long run average cost curve. Okay, so just a quick reminder, remember internally commas of scale happen as the firm increases its output or physical size. Externally commas of scale occur due to external factors brought on by the expanding industry or market, transport links, um, research and development to support the growing industries. That's the key distinction to make. Hopefully you get a great chance to use this knowledge and this analysis in your exams.